So hello everybody, you can hear me? It's okay? Okay, so thank you for being here with me. So our, my talk, the name of my talk is Put Some Magic in DevOps Life, so I will explain to you. So I'm very happy to be here to share with you some experience we had in SG. So we built something we call platform, and I will explain to you why we built it and how we built it for some parts. Qui je suis in French, because I'm a French guy. Who am I? So I'm Stéphane Dechou, already said. I'm work for Société Générale for five years now. I have 15 years in experience in IT. I'm a solution architect and the product owner of the platform. And before that, I was an architect of the platform, so I know it pretty well. I'm very sorry, I have to go just after my talk to catch my train. So if you want to send me an email or something like that, if you have questions, you can take a picture and I will respond to it as far as I can. I have about 500 mails per day, so <laughs> can be difficult. It's my professional one, so you can. Quick agenda. A quick introduction of Société Générale, SG. It's shorter, so I will say SG for now. Activity and IT. After that, what is a platform? The definition of a platform from Société Générale. Our journey, how we think about it and how we build it, and how we integrate some HashiCorp product in it, and why. And the future of the platform, the future features, in it. So, introduction of SG. We are a bank, one of the biggest European banks, and the origin of the bank is French, so it's still a French bank. We have four main activities. The first one is the retail banking, for people like you and me to handle your bank account. International banking, banking everywhere. Investment banking, trading part, all the trading stuff. And insurance for your car, your home, your life, your health, etc., etc. We are 160,000 employees worldwide and about 24,000 employees just for the IT. As you can see, we are a pretty old company, more than 150 years old, and this pretty old lady is in good shape. If you check our financial capacity last year, 3.8 billion of euros, so not so bad grandma. IT, so now we will talk about IT because we are here for talking about IT. Just a quick question, picture it. We create a giant stack, we pile up all our data center equipment in a giant stack. Do you have an idea about the height of this tower? Just a hint, think in Eiffel Tower, not in Meta. Idea? No? Eight times. So not so bad, 2.7 kilometers. Our network. We have enough optical fiber to cover the Tour de France race. It's about 3,000 kilometers of optical fiber. Storage. We handle 40 petabytes of data, more than 200 years of HD video, and we double it our storage in three years. Our power. We have a grid computing with about 100,000 cores, CPU and GPU mixed, so we can forecast weather faster than Meteo France. Meteo France is an official organization in France to forecast weather, and we can do it faster than them. So this is my playground. Not so bad. So every day I work with that. What is a platform? Like other big companies and major companies, we start a digital transformation. I think a lot of, a lot of uh, you are doing the same thing right now. We embrace agile stuff, new way to doing things, DevOps, SecOps, all the package. But to continue our transformation, we need more tools. And why we need more tools? Because we are in a very competitive world, with UBS, for example. Competitor, but friends, too. We need to do things smarter, faster, and better, and always in a secure way. We need to provide new services to clients. And sometimes we need to do it before they think about it or they need it. It's very important. Time to market is very crucial for us. So we create what we call a platform. And we did something crazy. We talked to people and we asked them, what do you want and what do you need? Maybe it seems obvious for a lot of you, but in big companies like Société Générale, it's not so obvious. So we talked to people, we say, okay, 
no, we have digital transformation, we need to do some things, we want to try new things in a new way, what do you need? So we talked with a lot of people, devs, you, devs, developers, sorry, ops, sec guys, etc. And this is a sum up and the feedback and the expectation they have. For the dev, they do not care about plumbery. They do not care about how it works. They just want to deploy, to develop code easily and use the tools they like and they love. They don't want to change everything. For the ops, it's different topics. They want to have generic component, and everything must be automated with API for the self-service, for example. So if you want to create a database, you have an API to do that, you call the API, and everything is done for you in a generic, with a generic component and re with sorry, reproductible, reproductible behavior. Difficult in English. So when five projects ask for a database, the five databases will be installed in the same way. So it's easier to manage, it's easier to debug, and it's easier to update. So it's very important. Integrated, something totally important for us. In this platform, I will describe it in a few minutes, we have a lot of products running in it. It's like the best of breed. We, we use a lot of products, Ashiko products and other. Those products must be integrated with each other. They must be able to connect and talk to each other. If it's not possible, we create some glue to do that. But everything must be seamlessly integrated. And more important, everything must be integrated with your development framework. So I will use Spring Boot as an example. We have two stacks. In SG, I will describe it later, for .NET and for Java. And we put a lot of things in the code. So you can interact with a service in a platform directly in your framework. It's very important for us. You will need to have a very, very good developer experience because we want to do things faster. Everything must be resilient in active, active way, multi-data center, data replicated from a data center to one over. You cannot lose data or something like that. So it's very important. Everything, every application that will run on this platform must be able to run in a cluster way and distributed way. We want to improve your infrastructure efficiency. So we check our infrastructure. We have about 10,000 VM running right now. And the average usage of the VM is between 5 or 10 percent regarding CPU or memory. So we want to improve efficiency. We want to have some densification, to have some massification, and mutualize some services to avoid to have a lot of VM but do nothing the rest of the year. We are a bank. Everything must be secure. No data leakage. Everything has a secret. Everything is encrypted. The flow, the data, everything. You can use mutual TLS, strong airbag model, MFA, et cetera, et cetera, with DMZ, uh, a lot of DMZ. So everything must be secure by design. One sentence, the platform, use it and do not think about it. It's very important. Our journey. We decide for this platform to use containers. So it's a logical choice, the choice we have right now. So we want to have containers on this platform. So everything will be containers. Everything regarding the application. Not all the services, but the application will be and will run in containers. So when you start to work with containers, some things change. Something change because you are not doing the same thing than before. So for example, I have eight examples right now. People ask us how to access to my containers. So if I scale up or scale down, the IP change, I don't know where is my container, I cannot call the DNS API to, uh, to put a C name on it or something like that. So they ask us how we do that. Or I publish my services, or I expose it. How to handle my configuration? Before I've got the property files on my VM, start my, start my Java, it works. So right now I don't know where my container will run. So how do I handle my configuration? How to handle my secrets? Same thing, we have some file with encryption on VM, you can use it as a secret. So I know how I do that. How do I manage and store my secret in a secure way and in an easy way? How to register my services? So some applications are already in microservices architecture. So they are using console right now in dedicated cluster with dedicated console agent or something like that. So when they will run in the platform, 
how to use console in the platform. It is different than before. Do I have to handle agent or not? My, cons my console agent will be a container or not? I don't know. So we have to answer this question. How to handle my certificates? When you start a container, every time you start it or you restart it or you scale, you will have a new IP, a new container ID, etc., etc. So you have to create dynamically certificates to handle a full security chain on TLS. So they ask us, oh, I cannot do that because for the moment I have to create a ticket to have a certificate. So how oh, I do that with container? Generic question, how to deploy, to monitor, and to log my container, to check my logs. Again, they have VM, they have VM, they connect to the VM in SSH, they read the log file, and they can debug. Same things for monitoring. We have solution for monitoring, or they have their own solution to be able to monitor the infrastructure or the application itself. So do I need to change my monitoring tools? Do I need to, what, are, what I have to do to monitor and to retrieve my logs? Obviously, do I need to modify my code? Do I have to throw everything to run in container or not? Good question. Can I use the same framework as before? Can I use the same tools, etc., etc.? And obviously, more and more questions. But just a stomach. So, we will talk about the platform and how we integrate Vault and Console and Fabio, because we are in Archicorp, so I will talk about those three. This is our platform. So it's based on Docker Enterprise Edition, on the left, with three main components, the UCP, Universal Control Plane, the manager of the platform, that will schedule tasks, create resources, etc. On the engine, so we call it engine or worker, so we'll have a lot of nodes, it's a VM, with a Docker engine running of, it, running of it, and everything will be sch scheduled on it. So all your container, all your application container will run on these workers. Nothing runs as an application on UCP, only in UCP. And on the bottom, you have the DTR, the Docker Trusted Registry. It will be the component where you will store your Docker image. In the platform, we integrate some service or we use some existing service. For Jenkins, when you are onboarding on the platform, we create for you a Jenkins master as a container. You have the logo of a Docker on the bottom uh, right. And when you build something, you deploy something, it will pop up a container as a Jenkins slave. So everything is container regarding Jenkins. And we have, uh, I think, 120 Jenkins master running on the platform right now. So it's about 500 projects. Everything is integrated with our internal GitHub and our artifact repository. So we are using Nexus and we are using Artifactory. So when you want to build something, your application and your containers, or your image, sorry, with Jenkins, apply Parami start, it retrieves everything in GitHub, the source, compile it, retrieves the dependency for our artifact repository, push the, rep the, the artifact you build in Nexus, and after that, you start to create your image in your same pipeline and you push it in the DTR, so the Docker Trusted Registry. And after that, you can deploy it and lots of unit testing, everything you want. In fact, the Jenkins Master, you are admit, you are admin of the Jenkins Master and you can install all the plugins you want. And we create or modify very deeply the CloudBiz plugin to, to have this kind of behavior. We are using Sysding for monitoring and alerting. And in a few weeks, we will provide some dashboard for application, some generic dashboard for application, with a restricted scope, so the application with authentication can only see their own containers and all service or all stack, etc. For persistent storage, so for some container, we need to store some data, for example, the Jenkins master, we use two things. The first thing is a plugin of NetApp, Trident. We modify it too for security purpose. This plugin is able to create dynamic volume in a NAS, in a NetApp NAS, it's an ONTAP, and mounting directly on container. So when you start your container, you say, okay, I need a volume for 10 gigabytes, for example, it will be created in the NAS and mounted directly in your container. If, if something fails, your host fails, your container fails, it will be restarted elsewhere, and the mount will be done again to this container. So you retrieve your volume, you retrieve your data. And as everything is replicated between data centers. The so second plugin is a Containix CIFS plugin. We modify it to security purpose again. It lets you to mount existing Samba on CIFS share in container. So if you, have already, if you already have 
uh, CFS share or Samba share, you can mount it directly in your container with this plugin. After that, every logs, every metrics are sent to our data lake. So we create some dependencies, some library for java.net, and you have to use it to be able to stream every logs and every metrics to our monitoring as a services. So we are using Hortonworks for storage, Elasticsearch, Kibana, and Logstash for ending scene and for dashboard, and Zipkin to be able to track every call and response time of your microservices. So when you start your application, you have a dependency for Jenkins, and everything is done for you. You will have a dedicated OLK with dedicated dashboard and dedicated Zimkin dashboard. So everything is embedded. And for the free, the Vault, Consul, and Fabio, we are using Vault as secret management and certificate stores. We are using Consul as service registry, discovery, and key vista to handle configuration. And Fabio as a container for dynamic L7 load balancing. An important thing, so I talked about Spring Boot. So Spring Boot can automatically register your service in console when you start your Spring Boot, but we modify it because it missed some option and some fine tuning. So we create some bootstrap and some starter in a, in a Spring Boot uh, framework to improve it and to be able to do new things with console. I will explain to you later. So the console integration with our stack. When you start your container, it will be automatically registered in console. The service name, the service ID, etc., etc. everything will be done for you. You just put the name of your application, the kind of environment, I don't know, development, home, etc., integration, like you want, the script you need to do the health check, and everything is done for you. The configuration of the application is retrieved directly in the Kavi store. You can use console templates before starting your containers to retrieve some configuration, but you can retrieve the same thing directly in your code. We made a lot of things to do that, and you can enable, for example, figure toggling or something like that with console. So when everything's changed in console, you can enable or disable a feature directly in your code. We have some events, and we watch what happened in console. So it's provided directly in our, in our stack. For Vault, we create a plugin, in fact, and what this plugin does, I'm pretty sure that you already uh, use Docker Secrets, so when you create a Docker Secrets, you retrieve it in your Docker container as a TMPFS in var run secrets. So we did the same thing. In fact, we create a Vault plugin. Every secret are stored in Vault, but when you start your application, you put the secret in your Docker Compose file as a source, as a target, but everything is stored in Vault, and everything will be injected in your container as Docker secrets. So we, you will find your container in var run secrets, for example, my secrets, but everything, in fact, is stored in Vault and not in Docker secrets to avoid dependency with a Docker EE solution. And when you have to upgrade or you have to create a new platform, everything is involved. It is simpler to migrate. We create an API to create, to generate, and regenerate certificates dynamically. And everything is stored in Vault, too. So it's very important, because when you start your application, you retrieve your certificate, you create your trust store, OK store, et cetera, et cetera, with a good certificate, and you can start with it. And all the TLS chain is OK with our root CA, et cetera, with our own certificate authority. Regarding Vol and console infrastructure, we have two clusters. So in fact, we have this infrastructure for development and a second for production. So it's the same infrastructure, the same number of nodes, but totally uh, separated. So we have five nodes for console, so it's a mutualized uh, infrastructure. And for Vault, we have five nodes, two, and five console nodes dedicated to Vault. And we have the same thing in Amer and in Hong Kong. So we have this infrastructure for dev and prod in Amer, Hong Kong, and Paris. They are not joined right now. In a few weeks, it will be the case. So now, some technical. We decide to use console as a service on the platform. But who to use console as a service in the platform? We have a lot of questions. For example, my console agent will be a container or not? Do I need to provide a console agent for each project, or just one in each VM? Because we want to keep the way that console works. You have one console agent on your VM, you register locally to it, and everything is done to the server after that. But you have just one console agent locally on your servers. 
We don't want to have, so rem for, to have some remote agent or something like that. So how to reach my console agent? With localhost or not? How do I handle multi-tenancy and service isolation because this platform is multi-tenant? It's very important for us. How do we handle network isolation? How to help check my services? How to register or deregister my services? And do I have access to the console UI? We have some questions. So we made some tries. So imagine we are using console agent as a container, okay, and only one by servers. How do I use localhost? In my container, if I try to reach localhost, it will be difficult to reach the container agent. So it's not possible. Or I can use an overlay network. Yeah, it's possible. But my issue with that is every time a new project arrives, every time a new project creates a new network or something like that, I have to attach it to the control agent container. And I have to disconnect it when the, when the network disappears. So it's complicated. I can create a mutualized overlay. So OK, I create a big overlay network. Everything is connecting to it, and you can reach your control agent. But if I'm doing that, I'm losing the network isolation. So we decide to use console agent as a process, just one process per node. But how to use localhost? I cannot do that. We use DNS mask on each host, a patched version without the security issue, of course. Oh, we did that. We install DNS mask on each node. We create on each node a file with a DNS entry called console-agent.pass.local, and this DNS entry will return the host IP. In fact, the, uh, the, the IP of the console agent itself. DNS mask will listen to the Docker bridge interface. And we add, as a DNS server in a Docker demand, the IP of the bridge of Docker. So right now, when a container, if you do an NS lookup or if you do a ping or something like that with your container, or to try to reach console.agent.pass.local, it will return the local IP and you can reach the local console agent, like you are in a VM or outside the container world. So with this kind of features, we keep, this, the, we keep the original way of console to work. We don't want to twist the design. So with this solution, how do I check my health? Because, for example, everything runs in overlay network to have some network isolation. So all my container, all my console agents, sorry, can reach my container if they are running on overlay. I cannot do an HTTPF check. It doesn't work. So we use Docker exec check instead. So you have multiple way to, you have multiple type, sorry, kind of uh, F check in console, so TTL, TCP, HTTP, script, and Docker exec. So we modify Spring Boot to do that. When you start your container, it will register for you an F check with a script you gave in parameters. It will take the ID of the containers and create an F check with a Docker type for you directly. And the console agent will do a Docker exec, execute the script, and if the script returns zero, it's okay. If it's, uh, it's not zero, your service fails. So it's pretty handy. Or you protect your client agent from outside, because we have some application that already run on console, and they say, okay, I have to handle my console agent. No, I don't want to do it anymore. Okay, I will use the console agent remotely. So we don't want to, uh, to have that. So we create an repeatable rules to block the connection from the outside to the console agent. And we put an NGNX on top of it. One NGNX per node and a load balancer on top of it. And we add some filtering rules on the NGNX to just let get for the verb on the, for the catalog of the services. So we can only read services. You cannot register yourself or write new services. And for the KV store, we let everything, because sometimes it's easier to modify key value store in a UI uh, instead of using the CLE. And we give access to the UIs on the same filtering. We have some use case, for example, for every client that use console to discover the services and the backend. So we need to have this kind of thing, because we don't want to install a console agent on each desktop. So we did this thing for this purpose. 
how we handle the multi-tenancy with console. So we are using ACL or ACL. Pick your flavor. ACL, we will say ACL. Everything that you will create in console, in the KV store, for example, or the services, will be prefixed by the name of your services and your environment. So for example, we have a trigram nomination for services, so for example, ABC. So we create for you, we have an API to create the ACL for, for, for you. So if you want to be on board on console, you call an API and you will receive a set of ACL. And we create for you a directory in the console mutualized with your name of the application, ABC slash, and your environment, for example, slash dev. And you will only have the right to write in this directory with this ACL. Same thing for the services. You can only create or read services with the name of your services, so ABC dash your environment. So this is how we handle the multi-tenancy is console. Of course, if you need to share some things with other people or other projects, if you need to read services for, I don't know, uh, DEF application or something like that, we can create SEL for that. It's possible. But by design, we don't want that. We are using Fabio as dynamic L7 proxy. So how we do that? When you are onboarded on the platform, again, we create for you two or four Fabio, generally four Fabio instance as a Docker instance in a, in a uh, share in uh, two data centers. We will create a load balancer for you at point to this instance. In fact, multiple load balancer to, to have some HA. We create an on-try involved cluster for the certificates. And we create an overlay network for you. So when you want to be exposed to the outside, you just have to connect to this network and publish your service in console. And that's done. We create a dedicated set of ACL for Fabio2 to only write and read your services. So it's pretty simple, because you have auto-registering auto in your code. So you start your Spring Boot. You already register in console, and you are served by Fabio directly. And if you create some certificates during the startup or something like that, Fabio is connected to the vault, detects the change in the vault, and retries the certificate immediately. So it's pretty easy for developer. And everything is secure by default because you, can, you have to do HTTPS. It's not possible to do something else. So we dedicate instance of Fabio and load balancer for Fabio to be able to have some fine tuning for each application. Vault. We are using Vault in many ways. First one, the PKI as a service, so the API to generate certificate. Everything will be stored in Vault in your, in your in a dedicated uh, secret path for the, for the application. Sorry. Fabio will use it to retrieve certificate dynamically. We use it for the secret plugin I told you before, for retrieve secret for container itself. And we are using it with a CIFS plugin, because when you have to mount a CIFS share, you need some credential. And we store the credential directly in Vault. And when you mount this share, the CIFS plugin will retrieve the certificate, the certificate, sorry, the credential in Vault and connect to the share directly and mount the share in your containers. So everything is homemade. A typical workflow when you start up a container. You retrieve your configuration in the console KV store. You can use console template to generate a property file, for example. It's a good example. You retrieve your secret from Vault. We are storing in TMPFS like Docker secrets. You generate or retrieve your certificates directly from Vault. You start your application. Everything is registered in console. You can retrieve more configuration if needed directly in your application. Fabio configure itself because it watch what's happened in Vault and console and modify its configuration accordingly. So if you scale up or scale down, it will modify directly, it will modify directly its configuration and in a dynamic way. So you are not losing uh, connection because it doesn't restart itself. And when all the health checks are okay, Fabio serves your request. This is a typical worker we have. 
So Docker E install and a lot of stuff like CIFS plugin, NetApp plugin, DNS mask, syslog, Fabio, SysDK agent, a console agent, of course, HRM, it's a dedicated solution, HTTP routing mesh for Docker E. So this is a typical worker we have in FG with all the services connected to it. And we use other Archicop product too, like Vagrant, we are using to deploy environment, development environment on desktop to fasten the onboarding or something like that. We are using Terraform as infra code to deploy resources in Amazon and Azure. And Packer, it's an OS battery for CSP. We have an open source project to do that, so we are using Packer and we have an OS battery to create our MEI, for example, for Amazon. We have a framework to do that. It's open source. And what's next? A lot of things. We want to leverage on the public cloud and on managed services. We want to do, it fa we want to do things faster and smarter, and Amazon are faster and smarter than us. So there are many services we cannot compete, so we want to use their services. And again, TTM is crucial. Time to market is crucial. And we, I think we will have some hybridation between on-premise and cloud, public cloud, I'm not really sure, but maybe we have, so we have to use their services. Everything will not run in public cloud, so we need to have next generation data center on-premise with SDS and SDS, so software defined storage and software defined network, because we have a lot of dynamicity with container, and the infrastructure sometimes is not so dynamic, so we need new way to do things on a low level infrastructure like storage and network to handle this kind of new kind of workload. Serverless, so we want to have a solution for doing lambda on function and premise. So I cannot talk too much about it because I, uh, I will have a demo. I will make a demo in two weeks. I'm working with a uh, team in America by doing an incredible works like that. I'm pretty proud of what they did. It's pretty amazing. Uh, really, really. And uh, I think uh, I will demo it in two weeks, privately. So maybe in a few months I can talk about it, but for now I cannot. Open banking, because we provide service outside of SG, to be on internet. So we need to find a way to deploy a service in, fast, in a in very easy way, in, fa in, a, in a fast way. Because when you want to do that right now, we have to create VM in multiple DMZ, you have to open the firewall, so it takes months. And we work on a new design for doing that during one year now, and then we are put it in place right now. And it will not be weeks, months, or days, no, it will be minutes. So we will be able to expose things in minutes to internet directly, in a secure way, again. And just for the security parts, we want to own for security with global rules and policy engine. We want to make security transparent for developers. Everything must be secure by default. We can use uh, Console Connect, for example. It will be a good candidate to do that, or Sentinel, or stuff like Cilium for the network part, or Aqua or Twistlock to check what happened in the container and secure them. So that's all for me, Team Spirit. It's uh, our mojo in Societe Generale. So thank you. <laughs>